Welcome back for the finale of my three-part series on growing veggies in cold frames through the winter. I've already covered all of the basic info and some other details in the first two parts of the series, so if you haven't seen those, you can check out the links down below. This time, I'd like to wrap it up by giving you some tips to help your veggies get through the most extreme cold parts of the winter. Now, some of you may rarely or never see any freezing temperatures and certainly never get any snow where you live. And if that's the case, good for you. We're all happy for you. The information in this video is for those of you out there who live in a climate similar to ours where it can get dangerously cold for part of the winter. The lowest recorded temperature for our area was 32 degrees below zero, and that was just three years ago. It was actually a tie for the same record from way back in 1905. With the wind chill on that day a few years ago, it was about 55 degrees below zero. But we don't really need to worry about wind chill here. The plants are growing inside the cold frames. They're protected from the wind, so not really a big deal. By the way, if you want to learn more about the weather history in your area, at least here in the U.S., check out weather.gov. It's basically a database run by the National Weather Service where you can find all kinds of local weather records, which can be really useful when you're planning how and what you can grow, whether it's a small garden like this or a larger market garden or farm. So far, it's only gotten down to nine degrees below zero this winter, and all of the veggies have survived with just a single layer of agriculture fabric draped over the top. The green lettuce is the only one that's shown a little bit of freeze damage, but it wasn't too bad. The red lettuce has been much hardier, and surprisingly, it looks like it's even still growing. That one layer of fabric helped out quite a bit for when it got down to negative nine, but it looks like it's actually gonna get even colder than that in just a few days here. So in that case, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put two layers of fabric over the plants. And the fabric does prevent a bit of light from getting to the plants, so I try to keep that off of there whenever the temperature is at least above 10 degrees or so. Snow is also great for insulation, and it can help out a lot to keep your veggies alive all through the winter. I actually made a video about this last winter, so you can check that out with the link at the end of this video. But we got a bit more the other day, and now we have a decent amount built up around here. But if you wanted to bring in more snow to add and build up more insulation, you can do that as long as you don't pack it too tightly because that gets rid of all the air in it, which is what makes it insulate so well. We can even borrow an idea from permaculture guru Sepp Holzer. Sepp recommends using large stones or rocks in a permaculture landscape to soak up the heat from the sunlight during the day and slowly release that overnight for the benefit of any of the surrounding vegetation. Now, I haven't tried this idea myself, but it sounds like it could work well in a cold frame or a greenhouse. Of course, you would be taking up a little bit of the growing space with a large stone, but anything you can do to mitigate the cold could be a lifesaver through the winter for your veggies. Some gardeners have also used manure to keep it warm inside of a cold frame because it generates a little bit of heat as it's decomposing, but it really only does that for a short period unless you have a huge pile of it. That is one big pile. So it may not be very practical for that. It would be better to use manure for starting your plants a bit earlier in the spring than trying to keep them warm through a long, extremely cold winter like this. Now, of course, there are other electrical methods of getting some heat inside the cold frame. I'm all about energy conservation, but I don't have any kind of renewable energy sources here. But if you happen to have a renewable energy grid at your home, by all means, utilize it to keep your veggies warm during the winter. So that's it for this series, and thank you so much for watching. Even if we don't get much of a harvest from the crops this time around, I know I have learned a great deal about this whole process and I can do much better next time. So hopefully all of you watching have learned a few things as well along with me. And uh, if so, please give a thumbs up if you can see that and share the video out with your cold climate friends. Stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.